Hello, and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on landed costs. So in Acumatica, we can apply landed costs to revalue our inventory a couple of different ways. So if we take a purchase order, we'll just walk through the steps and let's create a brand new one. Select our vendor. We'll add some items to the PO. Take it off hold. And we'll receive it. So initially we receive these items to get them in stock. The landed cost comes in later. And as you can see, a purchase receipt is not really the area where we adjust prices and that kind of thing. But we have two options from this point forward. Once the items are received, we can either actions, enter landed costs, or we can go to purchases and enter landed costs as a separate function. So let's go to the purchase receipt and we'll select enter landed costs. We'll give it a date. We'll select the vendor. Now, Acumatica looks and gives you a list of the vendors that are defined as landed costs. So let's select uh, transit transport for a moment and let's drill into the vendor profile just so you get a look at the profile and what you need to do to enable a vendor to be selected here. So right here landed cost vendor is selected and that's why that vendor will show up. Okay. So now the first thing we do is we add a landed cost code. So if I press F3 here, I can see the landed cost codes that we have set up. Now, let's take a look at those so that we understand how they're set up. So we have three in the system. Let's take a look at the one we selected. So here we have the ability to give it a description. So for freight and miscellaneous origin charges, we select this. If it's custom duties, we would select this type. If you have VAT taxes enabled in your features, you'll see this option. So that's for value added taxes. Miscellaneous destination charges and simply other. Now the allocation method is how we distribute the costs across the item. So the purchase receipt, as you know, has quantities, has costs. The items have weights and their volumes. And based on that, you can use those to allocate. So for example, if you have your selected quantity and you have one item that has five that you're receiving and another item that's one, the majority of this landed cost will get distributed against the item that has the quantity five. So this allows us to predefine a vendor based on this landed cost. Uh, there could be terms. So the terms will automatically be defined when we create an AP bill from here, if we create an AP bill from here. This is the reason code. So if we take a look at our reason codes, those of you who haven't seen our videos on reason codes, this is an adjustment to the inventory item and this is the chart of account that we're using. Here is the tax category of this item. Again, if you're using value added taxes, we could apply a tax to this if it's applicable. Here's the landed cost variance account. And this is the difference between when the item's received and when you actually pay the actual amount. In Acumatica, you can estimate a landed cost and then later when the bill comes in and you have the exact amount, you can put that in there. In the interim, this is your variance account between the two values. So if we go back to our landed cost and we give it an amount, let's say it's $15. And if we go over to document details, notice Acumatica has brought in the purchase receipt and the various line items. So if we hit the save button here, Acumatica is allocating the amount $7.50 to each of these lines. And again, if we go back and look at our landed cost, miscellaneous details, you can see we allocate based on quantity. And because the quantity is the same 
for both of these items, it's basically splitting the amount across the two of them. So when we're done, we'll take this off hold and release it. And let's take a look at the journal transactions that were created here. If we go back to landed costs, and we can see all the way to the right, here is an inventory reference number that was created as an adjustment. So we can see we adjusted our items by $7.50. And if we go to financial details and click on the batch number, and we'll maximize this, you can see that we debited our asset account for $7.50, inflating the cost. We also hit our landed cost accrual account. As soon as we pay the bill, we'll debit out of that account. So let's create our bill for this. Now, creating the bill, we can do right from the landed cost, or we can draw in this landed cost into the bill. So let's go into payables, let's create a brand new bill. We'll give it an invoice number and we'll click add landed cost. So over here you can see our latest one, miscellaneous destination charges, $15. We'll check it off, add it, and when everything's done, we'll take it off hold and release it. Now if we go into financial details and look at our batch here, you can see we hit accounts payable, but we also, as I said before, debited our landed cost accrual. Now a couple other things here. Uh, we could also create a landed cost transaction from purchases. Instead of doing it from the purchase receipt, we can create one independently. If I select transit here and add a landed cost. Save it. Also notice these columns here. So this is showing the inventory ID, it's showing the AP document, it's showing the inventory reference numbers. So all of these become populated as you get through your various phases. Now over here under document details, we can add a PO receipt or receipts into our landed cost document. So if we wanted to check off a couple of these, Acumatica will bring in the items and they're all our quantity five. If we save this, you can see that Acumatica is distributing across these three items. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching this video on landed costs. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. And our contact information is at the end of the video. Thanks again.